Hello from the Forstronic YouTube channel and welcome to Arduino Zero DAC Overview and Waveform Generator Example. In this video we'll be taking a look at what the Arduino Zero DAC is, look at a basic example how to use it, and then we'll look at a more complex example how to use it as a pseudo waveform generator. Uh, if you're interested in using Forstronic's contracting or consulting services, I'll provide some contact information on that at, at the end of the video. So what is a digital to analog converter or a DAC? It basically allows us to set a specific voltage level and output that voltage level. The Arduino Zero has one DAC, which is going to be located at analog pin A0. The maximum resolution of the DAC is 10 bits, so 1,024 different levels, or 0 to 1,023 different settings, where 0 will be 0 volts and 1,023 will be VCC or the reference voltage, which is 3.3 volts. So I mentioned that here, voltage 3.3. The output current, I couldn't quite locate this in the data sheet. So if anybody finds it, let me know. My guess is it's somewhere around what the output current is for a digital pin, which is about 7 milliamps. So it's important to note that the DAC is not a power supply. It's meant to be output to high impedance loads. So for instance, to control analog actuators or to use it as a waveform generator. But once again, low current output. There's only two Arduino functions for the DAC. They are the analog write resolution, where you can set the number of bits. So I talked about with 10 bits, which gives you 1,024 different levels. You can use less than 10 bits, and the only advantage to that is the DAC basically processes the digital setting to an, an actual analog voltage output much faster, or I should say faster. Then the only other function is the analog write function, and this is similar to the analog read except we're writing a value. So we specify the pin for the Arduino Zero that's only going to be A0, and then we specify a value uh, from 0 to 1023 if we're using 10 bits of resolution. And then that will translate it into a voltage to the output of the DAC. One thing to notice, or one thing I'll say, is Arduino only provides two basic functions for using the DAC. There's a lot of timing and interrupt and other advanced features that, that you can use with the DAC, you know, if you dig into the data sheet. Now I'll show an example in my waveform generator to how to use some of the more advanced features. And finally, here's the calculation for the DAC value. If you know what voltage you want to output, let's say 2.2 volts, you could use this formula to calculate what that DAC setting would be. I just wanted to show, in this slide, I just want to show a block, block diagram of the DAC in the SAM chip, the SAM D21 chip. I'm not going to get into much detail. If you're familiar with the ADC and how that works, and I have a video for the Arduino Uno and the AVR chips, a lot about the... Uh, ADC, it's actually a video series. But the DAC is similar in that it uses a reference to compare whatever your setting is, which comes out from the, the data register. It uses a input reference or some reference to compare that to to generate the output voltage. That's how it knows what voltage to generate. And on deep by default, all Arduinos use VCC as the reference. The DAC by default is going to use 3.3 volts. That's why you have 0 to 3.3 volts. Now there's other options if you want to dig into the data sheet where you can use an external reference. You can use an internal 1 volt or really I think it's 1.1 volt reference. The, the advantage there is that allows you to go lower than 3.3 volts so you can actually get more sensitivity on the output if you're not if you don't need a 0 to 3.3 volt range because you still have 10 bits but you have less voltage range to cover. And one, one thing to mention, too, is the, the DAC only can output up to 3.3 volts, the max voltage level of the chip. Okay, let's look at a simple example that's implementing the DAC. So let me start with the result of the example, and then we'll, we'll look quickly at the code. So all I did was write a, a basic program that uses the two functions I mentioned. The serial monitor is basically going to ask you what DAC value or what voltage you want to set it to. You can see in this example to the top left, I entered 2.1 volts. It then outputted that DAC value. I connected that DAC value to the ADC, to an ADC pin, ADC pin uh, A1. And you can see the ADC pin then read it in the loop. I should mention, since the DAC and the ADC have the same voltage reference, they're always going to read 
what the other out I mean they're always going to be exactly the same so that's why you see 2.1 here and you see I'm getting exactly 2.1 here now with 10 bits of resolution you would expect a, a fairly high resolution high accuracy output I also measured that same output with my DMM six and a half digit DMM which is you know I think 24 bit or something and you can see it's fairly accurate it's not going to be 2.1 but I'm getting basically 2.0959 which is fairly close to 2.1 so let's look at the code for this example. Here I set the write resolution. I also set the read resolution because the Arduino Zero actually defaults to 10 bits for the read resolution. It can do 12 bits. So I set the, the DAC resolution, the write resolution, and the read resolution. Here's where I set my I write my DAC value. Now notice there's two nested functions in here. These functions are going to get the voltage value from the serial monitor, and then they're going to convert it from a voltage value to a DAC setting and enter that into analog write. Here's the loop that just then measures from the analog read and you can see I convert that to a voltage and read the voltage or the ADC value and print it out. Here's the formula that does the DAC calculation. So the user enters a DAC value or I should say a voltage value and this function will convert it to a DAC value. So here's the formula. This function is just going to grab the voltage value from the serial monitor that you enter, similar here, and then this is just going to, this is for the ADC, it converts the ADC reading to a voltage to display. So once again, I'll have this code on my blog. Now let's take a look at a more uh, complex example, using some of the more advanced features in the DAC to use as a pseudo waveform generator. This waveform generator only generates sine waves. You're welcome to use this as an example. You can add other waveforms. The important part will be the code related to the DAC. So this waveform generator generates a sine wave and you can enter the number of points that you want to build the sine wave. So for instance, if you weren't too concerned about the integrity of the sine wave, you might only enter 10 points. Or if you wanted a lot of integrity or a good waveform, you might enter more. So for this example, basically the serial monitor is gonna prompt me to enter the number of waveform points. I enter 100. I press enter and then next it's going to ask me to enter the sample rate or samples per second for the DAC and this is the the rate the DAC will play the the hundred of samples that we just entered so I'm going to enter a hundred thousand so that means if I have a hundred points in the sine wave I'm, I'm playing each point at a rate of hundred thousand points per second my sine wave is going to be played at a rate of one kilohertz okay so I generated the sine wave this is going, I'm just showing the Arduino Zero connected to a probe on my oscilloscope. You can see the sine wave there. Sorry, it gets a little blurry. And then I zoom in on the measurements, and here they come in the focus. So you can see frequency, I'm getting pretty much what I expected, uh, 1,000 hertz. And my peak-to-peak -peak voltage is 3.3 volts, because I'm using the whole range of the DAC. Okay, that's the example of the waveform generator in action. Let's see the code. Okay, here's some initial variables I set. This is going to store my waveform points, this pointer, my sample count, my sample rate. These are just initial default values that I'm setting. Here's where I set my analog write resolution. Here's where this function is just going to get the sign parameters from the serial monitor that, that, that you saw me enter. This allocates space for my waveform samples. Now that I got my sample count, I could then build my pointer or array then this function actually generates the sine wave and stores the points in wave samples. Here's the main loop. And TC configure function, which I'll show below, TC stands for timer counter. So basically how this is going to work is there's a timer counter inside, multiple timer counters inside the SAM chip. And so what happens is I'm going to set those timer counters based on the sample rate. And every time the timer counter, which is going to act like a stopwatch or an alarm clock, goes off, the DAC is going to print out a value in my array that has my sine wave. And so that's how I can control the rate that the sine wave is generated. So I here the function takes in sample rate. This while loop, this while loop just runs until all the samples have been printed out. And so this function basically starts the counter or starts the alarm or the timer, whatever you want to call it. And every time it goes off, it prints out a sample. 
It then disables it and resets it, then loops back and runs it again as long forever. Here, this, this function generates the sine wave. I'm not going to go into details here. You can read the comments. This grabs the parameters and does the serial monitor printout stuff. This actually reads the parameters from the serial monitor. Here's TC configure. So this is going to use a lot of those low-level register and bit manipulations for the chip. And so once again, this is not going to be in Arduino documentation. You'll have to dig into the data sheet and to the programming examples for the, for the microcontroller itself. So here there's a lot of setup done for setting up the timer counter and then setting up the interrupt. Here, this, this function just basically after I change a timer counter setting, it gives it time to make sure that that setting takes effect before the code carries on. This is going to start the counter. So this will enable the counter, and every time the counter is done, an interrupt is signaled. And if you don't know what an interrupt is, I have a video on interrupts. Every time this interrupt happens, or every time the counter ticks down, the code stops what it's doing and it jumps to this function right here, the TC5 handler, timer counter 5 handler. And here's where we're actually going to write the analog value to the DAC from our array. We'll up our index value and then we'll clear the interrupt. So once again, this is more of an advanced example where you won't find it in the Arduino documentation. I just provided a simple sine wave. If you wanted to do more complex waveforms, you can add them and just use the same you know, functions for setting up the waveform and executing the waveform based on the sample count and the sample rate. And I'll have this code on my blog as well. So next I just wanted to show you an example that Arduino provides for the Arduino Zero using the DAC. And they basically have this tutorial on creating an audio player, which is pretty cool. They give you the parts list. You have to build up a little circuit here to drive the speaker. And this goes to the fact that I mentioned earlier. The DAC is not a high current output, so you're using this op amp to basically create a little more current or a little more power to drive this speaker. Here's the code for it. They basically abstract a lot of the complexity by giving you this library they call Audio Zero. So this does a lot of the heavy lifting of the DAC configuration because they need some of the advanced features of the DAC. And in fact, I went to this library and actually dug into the code and leveraged some of the code for the waveform example that I just showed you. Okay, that's it for the Arduino Zero DAC overview and waveform generator example. Both sketches or both code examples that I showed can be found on my blog. And if you're interested in using Forstronics LLC for doing contracting and consulting related to open source hardware, whether it's embedded programming or PCB layouts, you can contact me here. If you want more information on my consulting and contracting services, I have a video on them on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.